Good morning, guys. Today is Thursday, January 26th. Um, it is 9.07, I think, 7 at the time right now. I can't see because my I'm doing this on my phone. And you guys know that on TikTok, it doesn't show you the time when you're live. Um, so I'm a couple minutes late, but we're going to get started. Um, we're picking up at Acts chapter 16. I read the New Living Translation. This is one of my Bibles. Um, I really love my Bible. I also have a study Bible by Zotter Van. Um, it's, so this is New Living Translation. The study Bible is New International Version, NIV. Um, and the study Bible is cool because it's in today's terms, so we can digest it easier. Um, and underneath, like all, so like I have all this, but there's not really anything underneath it. So underneath it in the study Bible, it's like half of the pages, um, the Bible, and the other half are um, breakdowns from theologians and um, historians of it it just goes into great great detail so it breaks down um, like verses almost by verse um even more so it's a lot thicker than a regular bible but you get so much um like i the other day i opened to the front of the bible the before genesis which i hadn't done yet and i've had this bible since i think october um maybe November. I've had this Bible for a couple, the study Bible for a couple months. And when I opened it, there was a whole timeline of every, it was like four pages where, um, but of every single thing that happened in the Bible, like the, not every single thing, but like the major marks and underneath the biblical timeline was like regular history that we we're taught in high school and junior high and elementary school that timeline was under it. So it was really cool to see like the merge and to see like when wheels were created and um, then like tie it back to what was happening in the Bible at the time that wheels were created, what was happening, happening in the Bible at the time that glass was created because um, I, I don't know how it is for you, but I know for me, you know, you go to public school and they teach you history and they take the Bible out of it. I went to um, a Christian academy for two years of my childhood um, for kindergarten and first grade. And then after that, I went to regular school. And so in the Christian academy, we would read the Bible. We'd start the day off with prayer, like the whole school would go to the auditorium and we'd read the Bible together, we'd pray together, and then we'd break and go and learn like the secular stuff. But it was expensive. <laughs> and my mom was a single mom at the time. Um, and we couldn't, even though she had help, like my aunt was helping her out, like they just couldn't keep up. Like I remember hearing the voicemail of like, my tuition needed to be paid. And a couple of weeks after that, I had to be put in public school, which was sad. Um, but when you get to public school, the Bible's not even allowed to be talked about. Like I went to pray um, in the cafeteria one time and I got in trouble. <laughs> they called my mom at public school, but I was used to praying and groups and doing all this stuff. So my point is you get to regular school, they teach you history, but they pull everything about the Bible out and we're kind of conditioned. We're in public school for years up until we're 18. And so we're conditioned to think about only the worldly stuff. And if you're not um, in a family that's constantly reminding you of what the word of God says, um, you can start to create the picture of history and be like, oh, the this happened. We're way over here. Um, and that's really not how it is. Like everything in the Bible happened simultaneously here because then I can take my daughter with me. Anyway, my whole point in that was the study Bible is cool because 
it aligns history with biblical history. So it gives you a full picture of what God um, did in this world instead of separating it um, and removing God out of it, which is what happens in the world when we're not in our Bible. Okay, I'm going to start reading uh, chapter 16, verse 1. Paul first went to Derby and then to Lystra, where there was a young disciple named Timothy. His mother was a Jewish believer, but his father was a Greek. Timothy was well thought of by believers in Lystra and Iconium, so Paul wanted him to join them on their journey. In, defer in de deference to the Jews of the area, he arranged for Timothy to be circumcised before they left. For everyone knew that his father was a Greek. Then they went from town to town instructing the believers to follow the decision made by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in their faith and grew larger every day. Next, Paul and Silas traveled through the area of Phrygia and Galatia because the Holy Spirit had prevented them from, from preaching the word in the province of Asia at the time. Then, coming to the borders of My Mycia, they headed north for the province of Bithynia. Bithynia. But again, the spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go there. So instead, they went on through Mycia to the seaport of Tros. That night, Paul had a vision. A man from Macedonia in northern Greek was standing there pleading with him, come over to Macedonia and help us. So we decided to leave for Macedonia at once, having concluded that God was calling us to preach the good news there. We boarded a boat at Tros and sailed straight across the island of Samothrace. And the next day we landed at Neapolis. From there we reached Philippi, a major city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. And we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went a little way outside the city to a river, river bank where we thought people would be meeting for prayer. And we sat down to speak with some women who had gathered there. One of them was Lydia from Thyatira, a merchant of expensive purple cloth who worshiped God. As she listened to us, the Lord opened her heart and she accepted what Paul was saying. She and her household were baptized and she asked us to be her guests. If you agree that I am a true believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my home. And she urged us until we agreed. One day as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. She earned a lot of money for her masters by telling fortunes. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting. These men are servants of the most high God and they have come to tell you how to be saved. This went on day after day until Paul got so exasperated that he turned and said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And instantly it left her. Her master's hope of wealth were now shattered. So they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. The whole city is in an uproar because of these Jews. They shout it to the city officials. They are teaching customs that are illegal for us. Shout it to the city officials. They are teaching customs that are illegal for us Romans to practice. Sorry, I just need. My mouth is so dry. A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden robs. They were severely beaten and they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner du dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped. 
So he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, stop, do not kill yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. And they shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who lived in the household. Even at that hour of the night, the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds. Then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. He brought them into his house and set a meal before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced because they all believed in God. The next morning, the city officials sent the police to the to tell the jailer, let those men go loose. So the jailer told Paul, the city officials have said you and Silas are free to leave. Go in peace. But Paul replied, they have publicly beaten us without a trial and put us in prison. And we are Roman citizens. So now they want us to leave secretly? Certainly not. Let them come their selves to release us. When the police reported this, the city officials were alarmed to learn that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens. So they came to the jail and apologized to them. Then they brought them out and begged them to leave the city. When Paul and Silas left the prison, they returned to the home of Lydia. There they met with the believers and encouraged them once more. Then they left town. So that's the end of chapter 16. Um, I have this song playing in my head. I don't know the name of the song. Um, so, mm, mm, watch the door swing wide open. I can't sing. Roll back that stone. I don't know if you guys know that, <laughs> but it's a worship song. I can't sing, but um, maybe the name will come to me. But as the doors just swung wide open and they had the opportunity to run, but they sat there because they knew that God was going to get the glory for this if they stayed um, and someone was going to be saved and not just one person was saved. His entire family, the jailer's entire family was saved because they stood and they allowed God to do what God was doing in that moment, which... If you, he, they saved multiple lives that night um, by not cursing God um, when they got persecuted, when they're getting dragged to jail, they could have talked bad about God. They could have done anything. Um, instead, they prayed. Um, I just want to read something. It says, Paul and Silas did not seek their audience. They were confined with their audience. The other prisoners couldn't help overhearing them. Would Paul and Silas curse God for letting them get into this mess or praise him in spite of their situation? They chose to sing, pray, and praise God. And the others were listening. A curious world is watching to see how you respond to the uncomfortable situations in which you find yourselves. <clears throat> Your response determines how they see Christ in you and may encourage them to turn to Christ, who can cause people to sing in the midst of crisis. You may think the crowd around you doesn't care, but it is watching you and waiting to see how your faith works in tough times. That's exactly what happened with the jailer. Like He's watching Paul and Silas get dragged to jail. He's guarding um, at night. He's there, he's listening to them praying. He experiences the earthquake after they pray to God. They prayed and worship God. And after that, there's an earthquake. And all of a sudden, the doors of the jail just swing open. Like, what? This is an amazing God. Um, and so, so they're like, the jailer did the only logical thing that you could have done in that situation which is get baptized and turn to God. 
Um, and he's like, what can I do? And you guys might have people in your lives who are watching you um, walk through trauma, walk through um, crisis, walk through things that people don't normally walk through and come out smiling. And if they come to you or message you or slide in your DMs and they're like, how, like, what do I need to do? Tell them, believe in the Lord Jesus. The same way um, Paul and Silas told the jailer, all you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Believe in Jesus, repent and turn to God um, and get baptized. And that's all I'm going to say about that. People are watching you. You may not think they're watching you. You may not think anyone's paying attention to you. But someone is watching you and someone's soul being saved might be depending on how you react in your time of crisis. Are you going to curse God or are you going to worship through it? Are you going to break down and cry and panic and have an, like just go off the rails? Or are you going to say, you know what? God said... Don't worry. Don't be stressed. Uh, uh, my yoke is easy and like I will take the burden. I will hold the weight for you. Just give it to me. Um, so yeah, just be careful how you react because people are watching you. Um, and they're waiting to see what you're going to do. And if you do the right thing, they're going to come to you and they're going to be like, help me. And that's going to be an amazing opportunity for you. Um that's all I'm going to say about that. I got to go blow my nose and I got to call my mom back. I hope you guys have a blessed day and I will see you tomorrow.